Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to go through the process of setting up Python so we can do GUI development with T, T Kinter on Mac OS. By default, when you're installing Python in most situations, it's not going to come with TCL TK support or the T Kinter library actually built, even though it's part of the standard library. So we're going to do that in this video for Mac OS. If you are on Windows or Linux, there's an associated video with that. So you can skip this one, go to the one that pertains to you, and then continue on with the course. The other things that we're going to need throughout this course are going to be a text editor. And then like we have already kind of mentioned, we need a development environment that can handle GUI development. So this is just going to be your desktop. We can't use a cloud playground for this very easily. So we're going to do this locally on our desktop machine. And for the text editor throughout this course, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, which is wildly popular and really good for doing Python development. So if you don't have a preferred text editor of choice, then I would encourage you to check that one out. But let's get to installing this. There are a few different ways we can go about installing Python so that we can build GUIs. One of the ways is by going to python.org and using the pre-built installer. But I'm not really a huge fan of this because I like to be able to switch Python versions pretty easily. So I just in general tend not to install it this way. I like to use pyenv in order to install things. So that's what we're going to do throughout this one. We're going to utilize pyenv. And it's going to be a little bit more of a roundabout process because there are some things we need to do to make sure that the Python that we install using PyEnv can actually build GUIs. And in order to install the other things that we need, we're going to use Homebrew. So if you've never used Homebrew on macOS, it is a package manager that works a lot like Linux package managers like apt or yum. And I've been using it for years and it's fantastic. So if you don't already have this installed, then go ahead and follow the instructions here, which is just a one liner that goes off and runs a script to go and install brew and then we can hop into a terminal to actually go through the process that we need to get everything installed from the terminal once we have access to the brew command we're going to run brew install tcl oops, tk open ssl read line sqlite 3 xz and zlib this will install the various libraries that we need when we're building Python so that it can build up the optional modules that exist in the standard library. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to come back after it's done installing, and we'll take a look at some of the output because it can be kind of important. All right, we're back here with everything installed. Your output's going to look a little bit different than mine, but things that are in here about the caveats that we're going to be working with is basically going to show us that when we're using compilers, we're going to need some various environment variables to be set so that things will just kind of work out with us. Thankfully, it gives us some commands in order to do these things. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one right here. We'll copy this and run it. And then for the rest of these, we don't always need them. So we are going to potentially put these in a different file that we can just source before we make an installation. I'm going to copy this output real quick, and then we can kind of put it into the shape that we need it to be in once we're actually putting things into a file. So let's go ahead and open up a file. We'll just call this Python compiler config maybe. And this is just going to be where we go ahead and print these things out. So we will go ahead and set paste so I can print these out. And I'll just go ahead and get rid of some of these. These are not the only flags. And there's one flag that I even had a hard time finding in the documentation that we're going to need. And that is the con Python configure options. And we're going to set this to dash dash with TCL TK includes and then this is going to be a dash capital I slash USR local opt TCL TK include. And then that's a single quote to close that off. And then a with TCL TK libs dash capital L slash USR local opt TCL TK lib. And then space dash LTCL 8.6. And then another space dash LTK 8.6. 
And we'll close that with a single quote and a double quote. So that's a bit of a confusing one there, but this is the line that we need to add so that when Pyam's compiler is going off and doing things, that it actually knows which libraries to use when we're building. So let's go ahead and save and quit from this file. We're going to go ahead and source this Python compiler config. And then the next thing we want to do is actually install pyem. So we should hop back over to our browser and copy some of the commands that it provides us. From the pyem documentation, if we scroll down, thankfully the documentation is pretty good. There's an option to install it using Homebrew. I actually prefer to just use the basic GitHub checkout method, and this will work for us just fine. So what we need to do is copy this git clone command, paste that. And then we will need these other couple of lines too. So let's go ahead and copy these. And there's one more down here that we will copy and paste. And now we can exec shell to reload our shell. And now we should have a pyenv executable and pyenv version should work for us. I uninstalled pyenv and all of my Python versions so that I could go through this process again. And that's why you're seeing this message, but this is not a big deal. Let's go ahead and unset pyenv version. And now if we pyenv versions, we can see that there's system, but there's nothing else. So we want to use pyenv to install 3.8.5. And this is going to take a little while because it's going to unpack Python from source and build it and get everything working the way we need it to. So once it's done, I will come back. All right, we've successfully built Python to uh, use this. If you've never used pyenv bef before, you need to use pyenv shell 3.8.5. Oh, pyenv init. We're going to go ahead and just run this. I have kind of a custom setup that is messing some things up at the moment. But now let's go ahead and once again make sure that our Python compiler config is there. So let's do Python compiler config. And then lastly, let's do pyenv shell 3.8.5 to activate our version of Python. Now, if we do Python with a capital V, it will show us the right version is being used. And then to actually make sure that it's able to work with GUI applications, we can do python-m tkinter. And this will go ahead and load, mine loaded off screen here, a sample TK application that just has some buttons that you can click, and one of them is going to quit out. So we successfully have installed Python in such a way that we have an environment that we can utilize to do GUI development on macOS.